Good evening. Welcome to our four o'clock class. The day is April 20th. The month is flying by. So I did put in, I did post in your um, roster, in the roster in e-learning, for those of you who are having difficulty with um, logging into SIM chart or your computer is not compatible or you're having some other difficulty, I did post the project for module 157. So please make sure that you complete that project. It is also due on the last day of the module. Also remember that this does not take the place of your daily assignment. This is for your labs, labs only. So do not think that this project includes, is inclusive of your daily assignments and your labs. This is only for the lab part of module 157. And again, it's for those of you who are having difficulty with logging in or having access to the SIM chart. I did place the project in your e-learning, the roster. I emailed it out to everyone. So please make sure that you read the directions in its entirety. I will pull it up so that um, I'll go through it with you all for this lecture class so that you won't have any errors in completing this assignment. So I wanna go ahead, that's somebody saying they can't get in. I wanna go ahead and share my screen with you all. And we're gonna be talking about deductibles and coinsurance. So the basics of health insurance. Hi, Ashley. Hi. I had some, I was slow coming on. Sorry. That's okay. We're just getting started. Okay. So yes, the basics of health insurance. This is a PowerPoint slide that I want to share with you all. And this is going to um, possibly, and I hope it will help you when you're trying to do your SIM charting and just getting the basics and the understanding of the basics of health insurance. It says, what are all the things that could go wrong with the human body? And these are the different little things. All of this, anything and everything can happen with our human body. How health insurance works. Health insurance protects your assets from the high cost of medical care. But how it works can be complicated if you don't understand health insurance basics, like what a deductible is, when co-pays apply, and how coinsurance works. So this is a little video that I want you all to pay attention to because I'm gonna have some questions for you on medical costs, co-payments and deductibles. How do deductibles, co-pays, coinsurance and maximums work? The simple answer is they define the different ways health insurance companies pay most of the costs to keep you healthy. It's a little complicated at first, but not when you understand how everything works together. A copay is what you pay when you visit the doctor to share the cost of your health care. Copays vary by policy and can change if you see a specialist instead of a regular doctor or seek treatment out of your provider's network. Prescription drug coverage also uses copays which can increase for specialty medicines and decrease for generic drugs. Incidentally, in order to encourage healthy behavior, many insurers waive copays for preventative care. Let's say you go to the doctor with the flu. Your doctor charges a $25 copay, and when you fill the prescription, you pay a $10 copay to the pharmacy. Your out-of-pocket costs are $35 and your insurance company will reimburse the pharmacy and the doctor for the difference between the copay and the cost of treatment. Coinsurance is the way you and your health insurer share the cost of your care. For example, if you are injured and have already met your deductible for the year, your health plan will pay 80% of the cost of the rest of your bills, leaving you responsible for the remaining 20%. Maximum out-of-pocket is the largest amount of money you will be responsible for during one calendar year. So you won't pay more than a set amount in a year, no matter how high your medical expenses are. However, 
out-of-network maximums are oftentimes significantly greater than in-network maximums, so be cautious when going out-of-network. Your deductible is the amount of your medical costs that you have to pay before your health insurance takes over. Here's an example. Let's say you have a health plan with a $1,500 deductible. If you have only a few little things go wrong during the year that cost less than $1,500 total, you pay the full amount to treat them. However, if you have a catastrophic injury or serious illness that requires a lot of medical care to get better, you'll pay the $1,500 deductible, and then your health insurance takes over to pay most, if not all, of the additional costs. It's a way for you to shoulder some of the responsibility for health while still affording protection from huge medical expenses. To sum it up, you pay co-pays when you see the doctor. Co-insurance is how you and your insurance company split up your care. Maximum out-of-pocket is the largest amount you So that was some good information, you know, some good information about the co-payment, the deductible, some helpful information for you to be able to better understand how the co-insurance, how the deductibles and how your premiums work. Next, here we have, it says, this is some, if you listen to that video, it says, which of the following is the best definition of the term health insurance premium? the best type of health insurance you can buy, the amount health insurance companies charge each month for coverage, a bonus you get at the end of the year if you stay covered or you don't know. Anybody want to answer that one? What is the answer? It says, which of the following is the best definition of the term health insurance premium? You don't mute, Ashley. Um, out of insurance okay. companies. Yes, Jonathan, that's correct. The amount of the health insurance companies charge each month for coverage. Okay. That's the health insurance premium. Next, is a health insurance premium something you must pay every month, regardless of whether you use health care services, or do you only have to pay your health insurance premium? during months when you use healthcare services? Which one, A or B? Every month. Yes. With health yes. insurance, you must pay every month regardless of whether you use services. So, you know, a lot of times people are, you know, they don't understand that, they don't like that, that they're paying for something monthly and they might say, well, I don't never go to that. I'm never sick. I never use, you know, my insurance. But with health insurance, regardless if you are sick or not, you have to pay that monthly fee. Which of the following is the best definition of the term annual health insurance deductible? A, the amount that is deducted from your paycheck each year to pay for your policy. B, the amount of health expenses you can subtract from income on your yearly tax return. Or C, the amount of covered health care expenses you must pay yourself each year before your insurers will begin to pay. C. C. Yes. Annual health insurance deductible is the amount of covered health care expenses you must pay yourself each year before your insurance will begin to pay. I did this one. And move this over. It move you all to the top up here. Okay. Suppose that under your health insurance policy, hospital expenses are subject to a one thousand deductible and two hundred fifty dollar per day copay. You get sick and are hospitalized for four days. 
and the bill after insurance discounts are applied. It comes to 6,000. How much of that hospital bill will you have to pay yourself? Read it. You all, can you all see it? Yeah. It's kind of small, but I think it should be two two thousand though. Okay. Uh, a thousand, I think. So look at it. Suppose, so does everyone agree with Jonathan or what do you think? It says suppose that under your health insurance policy, hospital expenses are subject to one thousand dollar deductible and two hundred fifty dollar per day copay. You get sick and are hospitalized for four days and the bill after insurance discounts are applied comes to $6,000. How much of that hospital bill will you have to pay yourself? You all will be doing this when you get this career, when you get this certification. <clears throat> Jonathan, you said- so what did you say? the hospital pay is 6,000. And your deductible is a thousand and two fifty a day. It should be two thousand. Does everyone agree? Well, if your deductible is one thousand, then is you you don't have a copay. You're just paying the first one thousand. Or am I wrong? We, like, so just that's what I want you all to do. Read through it. Suppose that your health insurance policy hospital expenses are subject to a $1,000 deductible. Oh, and a and, copay. Yes. And okay. 250 per day copay. You get sick and are hospitalized four days. So if you do that, come on, four days, it's 250 per day copay. So 250, 250, that's 500. 250, 250, that's 1,000. After insurance discounts are applied, it comes to 6,000. How much of that hospital bill will you have to pay yourself? 2,000. Yeah. So let's check our answer. Let's see. So see that? Jonathan was correct. You see, you see how you get the amount? The correct answer is 2000 You pay the first 1000 of the discounted or allowed charge because of deductible plus four co-pays of 250 per day or another $1,000. Remember when we did that 250 250 500 250 250 that's 1000 That comes to $1,000 plus the $1,000 for a total cost of 2000 that you pay out of pocket. So do you all understand how that how we came to that decision? So that's how, and like I said, this is what you all will be doing when it comes to billing and coding. So make sure that you review this to understand, make sure you look at that video. This is being recorded. So you will be able to look at that video to see how you do the co-payments, the co-insurance and all of that. So great job, Jonathan. Good job. It says, which of the following best describes the annual out-of-pocket limit under a health insurance policy? Which of the following best describes the annual out-of-pocket out limit under a health insurance policy? A, the most use you will have to pay in deductibles, co-pay, and co-insurance for covered care received in network for the year. B, the most your insurance policy will pay for covered services in a year, or C, the most you will have to pay for premiums in a year. Read that question again and look at your options, your answers, A, B, or C. Which of the following best describes the annual, so the annual means what yearly, so the yearly out-of-pocket limit under a health insurance policy. The most you will have to pay in deductibles, co-pays, and co-insurance for covered care received in network for the year. The most your insurance policy will pay for covered services in a year. 
are the most you will have to pay for premiums in a year? What's the correct answer? A. You said A, Jonathan? Yeah, I said A. Okay. Ashley, Samara? Yeah, I agree, A. Samara, I know you're probably at work. <laughs> Do you agree with A? You can type your answer in chat as well. Oh, and I see I have information in chat, so. <laughs> okay. That was all from Jonathan, okay. Let's see. Did I do that? Um, it didn't come up. So what did you all say? You said A. A is correct. Which of the following best describes a health plan provider network? Which of the following best describes a health plan provider network? A the hospitals and doctors that contract with your health plan to provide services for an agreed upon rate or fee schedule, B, the computer system doctors and hospitals use to submit bills to insurance companies, or C, a website where consumers can find information about the best doctors, which is correct. A, I think the first one, A. 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 Yes, A is correct. Where it says, which of the following best describes a health plan provider network? That answer is A, the hospitals and doctors that contract with your health plan to provide services for an agreed upon rate or fee schedule is the correct answer. True or false? If your health insurance or health plan refuses to pay for a service that you think is covered and your doctor says you need you can appeal the denial and possibly get the insurance company to pay the claim. Is that true or false? True. That is true. Why is this information important? The, the question you just asked? Yes. You really got to know what your insurance cover when they send it to you and uh, when you sign up for it, it tells you what they cover or don't cover. So right, and that's where, a lot of people, <laughs> that's where a lot of people get in trouble and get stuck with the bill because they assume, like they read the certain things, but you got to look at those things that's not covered. I've even had that problem myself with my insurance company. They say to pay for one thing, but then they have those disclaimers, you know, that say that it's not being paid for. And, you know, like I said, that's why they say reading is so important. We don't read all of that because the packet is too big and we don't want to read all of that. And then we'll go and then the next thing you know, they're sending us a bill because it's not a covered uh, test or exam. So always make sure that you're reading what's covered. And then before you have a test done, make sure you ask that front person if it's covered and they can check to see if it's a covered entity for you. The role of a medical insurance billing specialist is to complete the insurance claim accurately, assist in claim submission, and obtain more accurate and timely reimbursement. However, before developing the skill, coding and completing insurance claim forms, it is necessary to understand how insurance works. So it says, what is a clean claim? A clean claim is a submitted claim without any errors or other issues, including incomplete documentation that delays timely payment. There are several required elements for a clean claim and medical bills are denied if elements are incomplete, ineligible, or inaccurate. So you have to realize when you're doing to get all of this, when you submit this information, it goes through the system. And then when it's clean, like I said, if you have no errors, incomplete, 
and it's not legible for them to see it. They can't understand what you have and it's inaccurate. It will come back and it's a denied claim, which stops the reimbursement process for that agency or wherever you're working. So you always want to make sure you have a clean claim. And it states a clean claim is submitted, a submitted claim without any errors or other issues. So do we have any other questions? Because I know y'all doing your um, SIMS chart. It's a lot of information, but this here is very important. So I wanted you all to just, you know, look at this review, look at the coinsurance, co-payments, all of that. It's very, very helpful for you to understand, get that knowledge of how do you do co-payments? How do you find out what is your deductible? How do you understand, you know, the portion that's required for you to pay, even though you have premiums paid, a lot of places you still have a co-payment that you have to pay. So just getting that understanding of what actual your role will be as a billing and coding specialist, or you might decide you just want to do billing, or you might decide you just want to do coding but understanding what has to be done and what is needed and what is expected of you as that professional. So do we have any questions? Matter of fact, let me go to the project for those of you who might be having difficulty with accessing, um, accessing SIMS chart. I wanted to go to um, that as well. Let me go here. Let me stop, share. well, I can do it here. So the, I sent it to you all. And I'm trying to think, I sent it as far as the project. Let's see, sent. I sent it to you all in the roster. I'm trying to see if it's gonna come up like that. Um, okay, here it is. So this is the project. This is the project for module. I'm trying to move it over for you all to be able to see. For module 157. So this is for people who are students who are having difficulty with accessing SIMS chart. If it's not compatible with your computer, this is the research project that will need to be submitted on the last day of the module. Again, this is not a replacement for your daily assignments, for your lab assignments only. So it says on here, part one, read the following, research each highlighted area write a description of each document and what it is used for in a medical chart. So it has, and then it has, what is a medical chart? So I have the definition here of what is a medical chart. What kind of information comprises a medical chart? All of the information is here. So when you get to this, it says a medical chart includes surgical history, example, operation dates, operation reports, operation narratives. So what I want you to do when you get this information, it says, write a description of each document and what it is used for in a medical chart. Research each highlighted area. So for this project, everything that's highlighted, you're going to research what it is. Surgical history, I give examples. So you're going to look up surgical history. You're going to look up like habits and smoking. You're going to do research to write a description of um, each document and how it's used in a medical chart. Next, it has medical encounters. This is all for part one. Part two, who has access to medical charts? Right here, it explains, only the patient and the healthcare providers directly involved in, his or, in her or his care can view a medical chart. The medical chart belongs to the patient and she or he has the right to make sure the charts are accurate or grant another party access to them. Patients can petition their providers for amendments to inaccurate medical charts. Then I have the link here. Use this link, read and make detailed notes on each step. Watch the following YouTube videos. 
So here it is, and it says, submit at least five things you learn on each video. These are the videos. This is the, the site here. That's part two. Part three, choose one system of the body and write a essay or make a PowerPoint presentation or even a project board. And so this was what we did before. So this is due, it's due on the end of the um, 157. So the last day of this module, this is when it's due. This project is only for students who are having trouble with SIMS. To know if you fall under this category, get with me. Please note this is to replace 20 days of classwork when completing this, keep this in mind. So this is for 20 labs. This is a 20 day module. This is for 20 labs. So if you have not started any of your labs, this project is what you would need to complete. This is not for your daily assignment. This is for labs only. This is 20 days of labs. So make sure that you're you know, watching this video. It tells you step-by-step step of what you need to do. It's three parts, but this is 20 days of labs. So if you're able to do your labs in SimChart, please continue to do your labs. But if you're having difficulty, like I said, some students' computer is not compatible with the Sims chart. Or if you do not have a computer, if your computer is broken or it's down, you can do this project for your labs to get a good grade. So do I have any questions? And see, so like I said, this module, the class doesn't last long because everything is the labs and, and charting and the medical record. So we're usually not on here longer than 30 minutes, but please do review. Make sure that you, if you have any questions, reach out to me. So Jonathan, I saw you had a question. Yeah, I was about to ask you about my uh, daily assignment. Yeah, it's, it's still, still going. Coming. It's still going. I don't know, how, I don't yes. know how it's doing that. I, I you're don't not know, the only one though, Jonathan. To... You're not the only one. <laughs> oh, I thought I was the only one. I'm like, I don't know how it's doing that because I'm doing it the same way when we first started. Yeah, everybody, like the ones who are doing it, it's like four students when they post in comments. And I think it has to do something with your computer. When you post in comments, it's still coming to my email. Like I got like hundreds of emails from you and your assignment is in the um, comment section. But it's like four of you where I'm getting that. And so what it is, it's like really jamming the um, emails. And then it's going to our director of education and our online director. And so it's, you know, it's just so filling up the IT to get my fix. Yeah, that's what they're looking at, trying to see what's going on. But we are working on it. Like I said, it's still coming to that when you sent me that text. And I said, yeah, I'm still getting it in the emails. I mean, it's fine. You're doing the work. So guess what? If it's not posted, if they were not to ever see it in the comments section, they'll see it in the emails. So are you able to get in and do your um, labs? I can do labs. I'm doing the labs. It's just coming out slowly. But the 157 project, <clears throat> I might just do it anyway. <clears throat> if so, I ain't caught up yet. so if you're behind, anybody that's behind on doing their labs, please do the project. Please do that project because believe it or not, we are, we're on what, day 11 already? <laughs> so yes. Yes, we're on day 11. The time is flying. So if you're having difficulty, please, I ask everyone, if you're having difficulty with doing the Sims and you're not able to get in, do the project. The project is for your 20 days of labs. So please submit the project if you're having difficulty. I just cannot stress that enough. I did put it in your um, e-learning email. And like I said, it's going to be on this, um, it's going to be in your lecture for Zoom. Also, I did place an e-learning because I'm noticing that a lot of people are not going through e-learning. I put all of your um, NCCT packets in there. So in the e-learning, the great section of e-learning, I have all of the NCCT certification packets already in the e-learning in a great section labeled NCCT. I also placed the um, NCCT class that was held on Tuesday 
that link is in there as well. So please make sure that you all are accessing those links and looking at those videos, looking at those classes and everything for NCCT package, your, um, your CPT, your ICD-10, your insurance, all of that is in your NCCT um, e-learning and it's labeled. So you have the packets to study. Like I said, even if you want to do one chapter at a time or do medical terminology, your um, medical office assistant, you all know, I stated before, you can take that certification ahead of time. You do not have to be a graduate to take that first. If you feel that you're capable of taking that exam, taking that certification early, you can. Also, I had someone to email me in reference to if you're able to work before you graduate. Yes, you can. If you need assistance, that's what career services is for. Career services will assist you with getting employment if you feel that you're ready. And as long as you're in school, a lot of our um, employers, they're working with our students. And then once you get that certification and pass, then you will get that pay increase. So you are eligible to start working if you feel you're capable in a lot of the places to do um, on the job training as well. But once you get your certification, you know, that just assists as far as having a higher income. So please, um, oh, the certification. This, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Jonathan. For oh, the certification, is, is there uh, anyone particularly that we can go to? Because I took one for medical assistant and it's nationwide. So can I go back to them and do it? Because they do have uh, medical billing and coding on there. Yeah, well, this certification is medical billing and coding that you're in class for. The certification- oh, the test, you... like, the certification I took was uh, NHAPP or something like that for medical assistant. Yes. They do have they do have medical billing and coding. Can I take it through them again if I want to? Well, when you take the certification for medical billing and coding, it's, it's um, a different, it's the NCCT okay. certification, which is nationwide. Okay. Yeah, and that's at the end of, like I said, when you finish your course, then Miss Franny Hoffman, she's the one that do the diploma plans and do all of that information and she will sign you up. Now you can take it online as well as going to a proxy site, whereas you have to go into a building, you can also take it from home. But once you, um, okay. your last module, she will send that information out to you all. You know, with everything, I'll be sending you your packets again, but she will um, get you registered in everything for your certification exam. But for anybody okay. who need assistance now and need employment, career services will help you with that. And also today, they're having mock interviews. I know that she's been emailing you, Miss um, Kelly Talley has been emailing everyone in reference to mock interviews. Samara, have you um, done your mock interview or signed up? I know they sent it to you several times. Yes, you can't respond right now, but if they're if they're emailing you from career services, please join. They're having mock interviews today for 630. She so, said no, ma'am. You didn't get it, Jonathan? <clears throat> she said no, ma'am, too. Oh, I didn't see it. I couldn't see it. Okay. So they're having it today. And matter of fact, they have the calendar that they sent out to everyone that they do um mock interviews and things like that on Tuesdays. So are you all receiving those emails? No, I'm not. I didn't check. I need to check. <laughs> yes, Ashley, please check. <laughs> it's not coming from me. See, it's not coming from me. It's an outlook, right? Yeah, they're sending it in, yeah, in roster through the um, Unitech emails. Okay, okay. Yes, because she said that the students are not responding. So, you know, it's not coming from the instructors. It's coming from career services. Okay. So please check your emails. Um, they're saying that participation has been extremely low. And they're, like I said, their work, they will work with you if you need employment now. You know, um, they are working with employers to get you all employed. And once you take your certification exam, then, you know, your pay will be increased. Like so if you, you wanted to do this. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Ashley. If you wanted to do a certification, you talked to Miss Franny, you said? 
No, you automatically have to do your certification exam once you graduate. Oh, if you're like ready, like but for if medical you're ready now, or If you're ready now to do the MOA, the <laughs> Medical Office Assistant Certification, you can talk to Franny about that. Oh, okay. It's okay. Franny Hoffman. Yes. And then also um, career services, if you want employment in that area now or whatever, they can help you with any type of employment. Okay. So please, that's what we have. We have the resources, you know, for this. So make sure that you're using these available resources. You know, if you're, you know, working and you think you might need a part-time job or whatever, and you need some extra, you know, income, contact career services. They are here to provide that guidance and to assist you with finding a job. So don't take that resource for granted. Do we have any other questions? If not, you all enjoy your Thursday. Make sure that you're reading your emails. Make sure that you're looking for emails from Career Services. Today for 6.30 is the mock interview. So make sure that you look at your emails for that. She did send the link. And also um, just you know, make sure that everything doesn't come from the instructors or different departments with Unitech, send out emails as well. So, you know, try to make sure that you're, you know, reading those emails when it's coming through e-learning and it's coming to your Unitech email as well as they're sending stuff out to your personal emails. So check your personal emails as well. So if you all do not have any other questions, you all have a safe and enjoyable weekend. And I will see you all next week. Enjoy your day. All right. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. You too.